Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. to see not everyone is glad to see us i have to say in particular this is really something a very loyal viewer somebody that really watches the show a lot and takes it in at 105 in the morning last night 105 a.m posted the following thought he wrote now that the strike is over the talentless low-rated creeps of late night television are back i knew there was a reason i didn't want to see it settled true losers <laughs> from real Donald Trump. This from a man who is such a loser, he buried his ex-wife on a golf course just so he could continue to cheat on her. <laughs> you get it, Guillermo? You get yeah, the... he's terrible. He's the worst. Yeah, but that's, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I love that with everything he's got going on, running for president, 91 felony charges, a $250 million tr fraud trial, he still finds time to watch his favorite late night shows and <laughs> tantrum about them. And then, let's read through that again. Now that the strike is over, the talentless, low-rated creeps of late night television are back. I knew there was a reason I didn't want to see it settled. True losers. I have to say, the way he worded that, it almost reads like a network promo. Now that the strike is over, it feels good to be back. We are back. The talentless, low-rated creeps of late-night television are back. It's like all of Melania's birthday wishes came true at once. I knew there was a reason I didn't want to see it settled. The writer's strike is over, and the true losers are back. Bing, bing, bong, bong. Oh, thanks for the plug, buggy. Well, you know what? I have to say, in fairness, he... You can't really argue with him. The man does know talentless loser creeps. In fact, um, he fathered two of them. <laughs> Eric was in, with his father in court today in New York. And last night, E.T. was a special guest on the Hannity Hour, desperately, desperately trying to win daddy's love. These other Republicans, they'll, they'll, they'll never be able to carry the weight that my father's carried, never. They want to have my father spend tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. These monsters want to have my father in a courthouse. My father came down that escalator. My father had them listed. When you see the amount of buildings my father has built, I am so thankful I've got the toughest father in the world. It's a, it's a roundabout way of saying, please hug me, Dad, before you go to jail for the rest of your life. Daddy Donald has his little hands very full right now. Today was day two of his big money fraud trial in New York. Yesterday, uh, Trump's lawyer said Mar-a-Lago was worth a billion dollars. Today, Trump said it's worth a billion and a half dollars. It's amazing how much your property value can increase when you just make up numbers in your head. <laughs> and what a head that is. I want to draw your attention to Exhibit A here. This uh, was shot by a photographer for New York Magazine. It's Trump arriving in court yesterday. Let's zoom in on that if we could. Is that... <laughs> it's like that. Opposite of a bikini wax. <laughs> I'm imagining a tiny little Moses in there parting the head sea. But the main event today wasn't in New York. It was in Washington, D.C. This afternoon, the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, was voted out of, of uh, his position. If you're not familiar with his face, this is Kevin McCarthy. Uh, earlier today, he had his testicles smashed by that very gavel. <laughs> He's the first Speaker in the history of the United States to be removed by a vote of his peers. Since 1776, up until now, 
It hasn't happened. This was an unlikely and historic team up between far right Republicans and Democrats. Do you know how much you have to suck to get AOC and Matt Gates on the same side of something? <laughs> Kevin McCarthy thought he was going to survive this. This morning, the reporters asked if he thought his speakership would survive the night. Will you still be Speaker of the House by the end of tonight? You know, if, if I counted how many times someone wanted to knock me out, I would have been gone a long time ago. Well, you're gone now. And <laughs> not coming back either. They've... The movement to unseat Kevin McCarthy was led by Florida Congress vomit Matt Gates, and <laughs> who was able to get it done. Matt, Ga they, Matt Gates is so happy. He, they say Matt hasn't been this excited since he wandered into the changing room at Forever 21. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy says he will not run for speaker again, which surprised a lot of people, including me. I mean, he's a Republican. You lose a vote, you just say you won the vote. You get with the program, man. <laughs> Hey, speaking of car wrecks, last night I was watching, I don't know if you saw this, our local ABC7 News. And I wanted to share this with the national audience because what I witnessed last night was one of the great police pursuits and performances by a reporter in a helicopter of all time. He pulls into an industrial area, and look at this, look at this wild pit there, full speed into the front of the work truck, boxing him in here, and now they will be forced to use force if this driver does anything threatening whatsoever. Look at this, backing up into those black and whites. He's backing up and shoving those units out of the way, desperate to get away. Officers with their guns drawn, and the canine unit out. Look at this, over the tree, through the trees, and trying to get away. Look at this, these vehicles are going to, look at that, the primary unit ramming full speed again. That vehicle is now disabled. The primary unit is now completely disabled. That work truck taking the fence with him and now getting on to the freeway, I think. He just got onto the freeway. He's going the wrong way. The wrong way on the freeway. Look at that. It's a female driver. A female driver jumping out of the vehicle, running into a cross lanes. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. The female driver running across the 91 freeway. Those drivers don't her. She is not well. She's not well. She's not well. And she is now running for it, crossing all lanes. This woman continuing the run of her life, looking for a hiding spot at a Denny's. She's at a Denny's parking lot. She is a desperate individual who is acting very, very erratic. The Well, the wig just fell off. We can't frankly, the gender here, but you saw that wig came flying off, made it a little bit confusing. Guys, this is out of control. This is just out of control. This person now running through the front of the Denny's and now into the Denny's, running into the Denny's. <laughs> well, I mean, what a great commercial for Denny's. Sometimes, sometimes you'll do crazy things for a moon's over my hammy, you know? But I, anyway, congratulations on that all around. Just some phenomenal work there. You know, the, um, a new season of NBA basketball is almost upon us. The season starts October 24th. Yesterday was media day where the great Jimmy Butler of the Miami Heat stood hair and shoulders above the rest. Jimmy, last year you came out with the braids, man. What's, what's this? I had dreads like, last year. Uh, yeah, yeah, the dreads. What's this? This is, uh my emotional state. <laughs> and while I don't doubt that that is true, Jimmy's new hairdo reminds me a lot of my uh, mother's hair. It is, they, they have almost the same haircut. And my mom can dunk, so. <laughs> Forbes magazine today released this annual list of the 400 wealthiest Americans. For the second year in a row, Elon Musk is the richest man in America, and maybe the worst man in America, too. I'm not sure. Elon's worth $251 billion, followed by Jeff Bezos, who's worth $161 billion. And these are staggering amounts of money. I mean, even just to count to $251 billion, you would have to count nonstop for more than 8,000 years. It's hard to even imagine. So uh, we went down the street, and we asked the most imaginative people around to give us their thoughts on this thing we call money. What is money? Um, it's small coins that that you could drop it into water or that helps you pay for th things. 
What is money? It's stuff that we assign value. Even though when you think about it, a person giving you a small slip of green paper with someone's head printed on it, and it for your hours of time and work sounds crazy. I shall, I'll explain why that is a really good thing. Let's say, and I'm going with the example I found online, you sell shirts, I sell food. You don't want my shirts, or I don't want your food, you can find the good that I do See, want. All money is, is a middleman for that third good, so that you don't have to go off and search for it. Where did you learn so much about economics? YouTube. Where do parents get their money? They get them from my other parents. From their parents? Yeah. How much money do you have? $200. Where'd you get it? My grandma and grandpa. Where did they get the money? From work. What do they do? Steal it. They steal it? Yeah. She works and she gets to like take money from the cash I just store. How do you make money? Sometimes it's just my mom's language money. What's language money? Language money, so, so you know how people like say bad words and all that stuff? Every time she says a bad word, she owes me $10. Really? <laughs> yep, it's a nice living. What about this home? You can hold it up so we can see it. Where is it? Uh, in, let's say, Santa Monica. Seven million. You're a pretty smart kid. I think you're smarter than me. Do you agree? Yes, I do. Given that I'm currently broadcasting something on TV. Sorry for roasting you in public. Although, granted, you can edit that out of the video. I have a feeling they're not going to. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty, I think. I think we may have found our next speaker of the house right there.